Good evening, everyone. Hope you're all having a great Tuesday. Hope everyone's staying safe out there. Well, anyway, today I decided that I wanted to open up nine more packs of uh, 1990 Fleer Baseball that I have from uh, one of the boxes that I've purchased in the last few months. I didn't really have any new boxes coming in. I've been kind of waiting on a box on eBay. My, I've uh, just given up hope on my box of 93 Max ever coming in. It's been two months. So I filed a claim with eBay. Hopefully that will get rectified. But in the meantime, I've just been kind of uh, browsing around on eBay trying to see if there's anything that I'm really, really wanting. I'd like to get some more 2020 Donruss, that set. I really enjoy maybe some 2019 Prism. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We'll, we'll just kind of see how that goes. But in the meantime, decided I want to go, go ahead and continue opening some 1990 uh, Fleer Baseball. We did some of these uh, about a month or so ago, I think. So we'll go ahead and give you guys a good look at these wax packs from 1990. I know this set's not a lot of people's favorite, but this was one of the early sets that I had uh, bought a lot of when I first started getting into the card collecting. And of course they come with this uh, sticker card. Sometimes there's one logo team sticker on there, or there's four. Fleer Action Series. I don't know if these stickers would even stick to anything anymore. And then there's like some quizzes on the back of these, and you can see the answers there. I'm not going to turn the card upside down, but we'll just leave it. And we'll go ahead. <clears throat> I know you can pull a uh, Sammy Sosa rookie out of this. I think there's a couple others that we're looking for. Maybe Larry Walker. I know that the Frank Thomas, I believe, is in the update set of Fleer 1990, so we'll just see what we can pull. Always like the fact that all the uh, players' names were in the team colors, so you will notice that. I thought that was the Sosa right off the bat, but it wasn't. And it's, there's going to be a mixture, and of course this is right in the middle of the Junk Wax era, so there's going to be a lot of common cards thrown in here. And then you get some like this one that have a couple of superstars. Well, at least Cal Ripken Jr., Tony Fernandez, a little less known. And it does say Superstar on it, so. Ted Power of the Cardinals. And these are sticking together a little bit. I don't know, obviously there's no UV coating or anything like that. Just sometimes some of these cards, like any other cards, will just stick together after being sealed up for a for a length of time. The only one in there was that Cal Ripken Jr. Tony Fernandez card. There wasn't anything spectacular in that one, at least in my opinion. Maybe somebody's a uh, huge, who was the last guy, Pete Incavilia. Maybe there's a huge Pete Incavilia fan out there that would like that card. But at any rate, let's see who our sticker is. Get it flipped over. Kansas City Royals. And I know I've said it before, I'd like to go to Kauffman Stadium sometime. I think that was a stadium built in the 60s or 70s. I'm not sure exactly when, but it's very unique. I'll have to look up this one. I'm going to set this one aside because this one could be an error. I know there's a few errors in this set. Of course, there's also that crazy Jose Uribe that sold for ridiculous amounts on eBay. Robin Yount. So as you can see, a lot of, uh, I mean, there, there's players in here that were good, but not Hall of Fame caliber careers. And for me, there's there, there's a personal debate about Hall of Fame. Here's a, a rookie, or kind of a prospects card. Um, the Hall of Fame, that, that uh, regardless of what sport or what industry, I, I kind of am against when, I think that was the first card we had in the pack, yes. I'm, I'm kind of at odds when people say, well, he doesn't have the numbers to make the Hall of Fame. Because it's Hall of Fame, not Hall of Numbers. If it was Hall of Numbers, then you would have, you know, a direct metric. Is it, is it <coughs> excuse me, this many home runs, this many innings pitched, this many whatever, insert your stat for automatic Hall of Fame entry. You know, I think there's players that had good careers and had good name recognition. Recognition. Let's try that again. 
but they, uh, for whatever reason, in their respective sports, did not uh, have not been entered in their Hall of Fame. I know a couple of them in baseball. It's like Roger Maris and Don Mattingly, both of which really surprised me. Not sure why they're not in. And it's obvious to me why there's players like Barry Bonds that are not in yet. That that whole uh, um, the steroid scandals and the performance enhancing drugs and and all that sort of thing. I I get that. I understand that. But hopefully someday that things will chill out in the Hall of Fame world and and there'll be more people get in that that didn't have quote-unquote the numbers. This had a few nice Reds players in it. I was hoping to meet Tom Browning back in January at a... I think it was Tom Browning back at, uh, at one of the local malls during the Reds caravan. And, and I tell you what, everybody needs to look at their local teams and see when they have certain fan days, because those are really good days to get autographs and photos. A lot of times they're at the mall or certain events. I've been to about three or four uh, Reds caravans, and we've got some really nice autographs over the years. And the players are always very accommodating and friendly. But back on there, so speaking, I'm going to speak of the Reds and they pop up again. There's uh, Sandberg and Hojo. But I just think the Hall of Fame, personally, I don't, I don't think you should have a set number if, if you have... Two players and their careers are strikingly similar. That if you have one player that has 450 home runs and the other one only has 299, but every other stat lines up almost parallel with each other, just because the one has 150 more home runs or didn't clear a certain benchmark of home runs, I don't. I don't think that's a reason to keep somebody out when when every other stat is uh, is equal. Perhaps if the if the other player, the player with the lesser home runs, maybe had more name recognition or had uh, maybe a a charity or some other facet that separated him from the the previous player. But again, that's just my opinion. I've just always been kind of I, I, it just kind of bothers me when when it's always well this player doesn't have the numbers and I don't I just don't like that argument. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's that's just my opinion. That's just how I think that it is and. Of course, like with me with the NASCAR Hall of Fame, they're kind of, it's, it's, that one's really been weird. There's a, a nice John Smoltz card, who we have here, Wade Boggs and Mike Greenwell. Of course, Mike Greenwell uh, eventually raced in a few truck series races. We've talked about that before on the channel. Doc Gooden. But yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm not, it's not something that I'm going to get up and, and, raise a big stink about, but just my personal opinions. I didn't know what everybody else's thoughts were on various halls of fame, regardless of sport, if it's baseball or... And I just bring up baseball because, one, we're opening baseball cards, and two, it's probably the most well-known hall of fame in all of sports. But yeah, I could go on about players like Pete Rose or Barry Bonds or... Roger Clemens or whoever that have numbers, we can talk numbers all day about them, but with that being said, Padres team sticker there. And of course, I'll eventually work on a set of 1990 Donruss. Kind of think it's a fun set, probably easy to build. And we'll, I'll flip these cards over so you can all see the backs of them. There you see it has the player vital statistics there, all their career information, and then just a little bit more in-depth statistics. So definitely a statistic-oriented card for people like me that are numbers guys and kind of enjoy reading some of that stuff and really haven't had a whole lot of star power in this. Again, I'm not surprised. I know, know what I'm getting into. Dion, I believe that's his rookie for baseball. Again, I knew what I was getting into opening 90 Fleer. But I really didn't have any new boxes of anything that I wanted to open. So I just thought, well, we'll just do a kind of have this on standby as alternative or alternate programming. Because you guys, you know, I, I kind of force feed y'all a lot of racing. And when I can get some baseball on the channel, I enjoy it. 
and this was and this also 1989-90-91. That was the era that I also really started appreciating it more as a professional sport and not being so bent out of shape as a youngster when, you know, there was four channels on television and three of them had baseball games on. So I became more receptive to watching more baseball on TV and understanding it a little bit more. And I think with understanding comes respect and so forth. And I started appreciating it more and appreciation. I'm not seeing really anybody here that's jumping out at me. Kind of surprised I haven't seen like a Nolan Ryan. Uh, Kevin Moss. I, everybody would have been wanting that card in 1990 for sure. But again, surprised I haven't seen like a Nolan Ryan, a McGuire, a Canseco, Griffey Jr. second years in this. I'm really surprised we haven't come across one of those other big name stars there. We got two more packs, so we might be able to make it happen. Hope we can. Mm. So let's see who or who's on this sticker. Milwaukee Brewers. Don't know if uh, any of you guys ever noticed this with the Milwaukee Brewers, this particular logo. Yeah, it's a glove with a ball in it, but you have an M right here. And then you have a B right here for Milwaukee Brewers. So I always thought that was kind of interesting, hidden little details that teams put in their logos, much like companies in uh, the business world do. They'll put little hidden messages. So there we have Gary Carter. I believe he passed away a few years ago, sadly. Tom Candiotti, Jose Rijo. He was a, always liked him for the Reds as a pitcher. Thought he was pretty strong. Dale Murphy. You know, again, you talk about players that have name recognition, you know, that, that's a name that always pops for me, Dale Murphy. You know, any one of these guys at any time, Greg Maddox, there's another good pitcher. Any one of these guys at any given time could have been just a star, standout, top-of-the-line players. But unfortunately, they, they just didn't happen for many of them. You're always going to have a top 10%, and you're always going to have a bottom 10%. And the rest of them fill out in the middle. Rob Dibble, I think we've I think we've pretty much completed our 1990 World Series pitching rotation. The winning winning pitching rotation, I should say. I've seen Dibble and Browning and Riho and maybe Scott Scudder. We haven't seen Scudder yet. Or can't remember for who the other ones were. I know Ken will tell me. Ken will remind me who the all the Reds pitchers were if I forgot one. Looks like we have some AL on the top and NL on the bottom. It's our final pack of the day, pack number nine. I'll have to put this stack with my other stack of 1990 Fleers, and that way I can get working on the set. I bought some pages, so I've got some albums, be able to start getting this stuff together. Just got to do a little math to figure out how many pages I'm going to need all together for some of these sets. And I don't even know what card I started this pack with. So it looks like we're not really got a lot of star players in this stack. Of course, this was the stack that was in the box in the back right. Thought we were going to have Ozzy Smith. I seen an Ozzy there, and that Frank Frank Tanana. Bruce Hurst, who's this? Rookie Stars, Dave Hansen, Kelly Mann. So, unless we get something here in the next, I think that's where we started. I'll, I'll go through these. Yep, this this was it. Not a great stack. Maybe we got two more stacks to go in that box. And again, I've got to look up this card just to make sure. I think, I know, the, I know there was an error, Players of the Decade with the Ripken. Can't remember the Sandberg error, but nonetheless, we did pull one of those. So hopefully maybe tomorrow. I'm um, not sure what I got planned for the next couple of days. I got to think about that because I don't have any new boxes that I have to open. Would like to get a couple more. I'm looking at a few things on eBay. So of course that'll be a few days to come in. But I do want to encourage you guys to continue to support all your local card shops and antique stores and a couple of my favorites always have to give a shout out to indie card exchange down there in nora those guys are awesome people 
always, you know, try to get down there when I get a chance to, uh, when I get a chance to go down there and go ch go visit Holly at the Scrounge Around in Anderson. Those those guys were really nice to me this past weekend when we were over there. And they I've got to go back because they've got so many more die casts and Hot Wheels and just just different things in different booths. So I encourage everybody to go out there and and, and support your local businesses because uh, you just never know what you can find. You've seen what I've been finding, and it's it's just it's just nice to get out and engage. So. Uh, once again, I appreciate the subscriptions. We're up to 117 now. Had another new subscriber. I believe it was uh, 502 Cards was the subscription name that came through. So welcome aboard. Hope you enjoy what we're doing on this channel. Thank you for everyone else. It's been uh, continuing for the ride, and we're going to continue to grow. Again, I talked about giveaways. We'll probably do the next one at 500. It'll probably and most likely will be a relic giveaway, one for each sport like we did with the rookie card. So I'll have a relic of racing, a relic of, of baseball, and a relic card of wrestling. And I'll have to go through what I've got, or I can look on eBay and find something that I think that would be appropriate for the channel that everybody would like. So once again, I appreciate you guys watching. You know, if you need to get a hold of me about anything, have any questions, i got all my information there on that awesome little, um, I don't know what you'd call it, label, whatever, that my wife made. I really appreciate that. That was really nice of her to do that. But just uh, hope all you guys keep watching. Let's get the keep those likes coming, keep those comments coming, keep hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. I thank you for watching, and we will see you again tomorrow.